it's Alex Vanover. Welcome back to my craft room. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your very own vertical porch sign using vinyl and your Cricut. So let's get started. Start prepping the wood for your sign by sanding it. I am using a 220 grit fine sandpaper since my wood is already fairly smooth. If your wooden sign is rougher, you may want to start with a coarse sandpaper and work your way to a fine sandpaper in three or four steps. Sand the entire area of the wood you're going to paint in the direction of the wood grain. Once you've finished the top, don't forget to sand the sides as well if you plan on painting them. When you're finished with sanding, wipe off your wood with a barely damp cloth to remove any dust left behind from sanding. Then give your sign a few minutes to dry before you begin painting or staining. Next, it's time to paint or stain your wooden sign. I'm going to be painting mine using foam brushes like these and acrylic chalk paint in an off-white color on my sign. Shake up your paint and pour a generous amount onto a paper plate. Remember that wood is porous, so it's probably going to use a lot more paint than you expect. I started by painting down one side of my board, then moving to the top. I chose to use foam brushes on my sign because they never leave any bristles behind, but you can use any kind of paintbrush that you prefer. Once the top was covered with paint, I tipped the board up on its side and painted down the opposite side to ensure that I had really good coverage. The acrylic chalk paint that I used has a really nice matte finish, but I did notice that it was pretty thin. After this coat was dry, I painted a second coat on top of it, and you can still slightly see the wood grain through both coats of paint. So if you prefer a more full coverage look on your sign, you may want to find a different kind of paint to use. Next, it's time to seal your painted sign. I'll be using polycrylic as my sealer, but you can also use polyurethane as well. Simply apply the polycrylic using a foam brush and a thin and even coat. Don't forget to seal the sides as well. And I have had the most success with a foam brush, so in this step, I do recommend actually using a foam brush for your sealer. It's really important to seal wood when you're putting vinyl on top. This is because wood is a porous material and vinyl doesn't typically stick well to porous materials. So sealing the wood underneath the vinyl creates a smoother, less porous surface that makes your permanent vinyl stick to the wood long term. You will notice in this tutorial that I am not going to be sealing over top of my vinyl with anything because there is no need to seal on top of the vinyl. If you seal over your vinyl, the sealer can actually seep under the edges of the vinyl and cause it to lift when it normally wouldn't. So make sure to seal your wood before you apply your vinyl and do not seal anything over top of it once your vinyl is applied. Once you're finished painting your sealer, look down the sign at eye level to see if there are any areas that were missed. If there were, lightly go back over these areas with your foam brush to ensure an even seal. Then, once your polycrylic is dry, we can jump on into Cricut Design Space and start working on that vinyl design. So to get started with your porch sign, let's take a look at the SVG file that I am going to be using because I'm not going to explore all of these options. So I just want to make sure that you guys know um, all the different things you can do with this bundle if you decide to buy this bundle as well for your sign. And I will link it down in the description below for you in case you'd like to use it yourself. So if you look on this second photo, there are all these different ways that the designer has um, arranged everything to make it super cute, literally for any season, which is the kind of signs that I absolutely love. So I already have everything downloaded, but I want to show you something kind of neat about this download. When you go into the folder, and we'll go into the PNGs so we can view everything. Oh wait, sorry guys. <laughs> we need to go into the welcome file locator key. So when you open all of this up, you can see that all of the fonts have a number at the bottom and that tells you which file is which. I'm going to be using number six on my sign. And then I'm also going to be using the pumpkin and I'm going to be inserting some of the laurels. So let's jump into Cricut Design Space since I already have everything uploaded that I'm going to use and I can show you how to arrange your sign. 
So if we go into design space, I'll go back into my uploads and grab my most recent few uploads that I'm gonna be using for my sign, then I'm going to insert those images into my canvas. But for now, I'm gonna set them aside. And the first thing I need to do is actually make a, um, make a template that's the size of my piece of wood. So I have a huge piece of wood that I'm using for my porch sign. So I'm gonna insert a shape that's just a basic square and I'm going to unlock it and make it the exact same size as what I measured. So my sign is nine and a half inches wide by 72 inches tall. It is literally six feet tall. So it is really, really big. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to use the zoom and zoom way out so I can see everything that is going on. The other thing that I'm going to do with my sign is I'm going to make it like a, um, maybe we'll make it like this gold color. I actually did paint it like a, like an off white, um, but since that's not an option, at least this color will be easy to look at so we can tell what we are working with here. So after I create the template in Design Space, I need to go to More, and I wanna position my template at zero, zero. And the reason for that is so that I know where to line my items up on my sign when I get when I get these items actually cut out. So we can actually use this grid here along the side to know where to line things up before we even um, get started with our vinyl. So first, I'm just gonna stick this pumpkin here at the top, whoops. Need to right click and click send to front. Then I'm going to arrange my laurels next. I'm only gonna be using these two laurels right here. So I'm gonna ungroup this and I'm gonna move, actually I'll just use one, and then click and drag a box around the rest of them and delete them. So I'm gonna take this one laurel, which you guys saw was over the top and bottom of the welcome, and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees because I wanna use it along the sides of my pumpkin instead. So the reason that I want it to frame my pumpkin is because I need to take up a little bit more space at the top of my design um, because I have such a large board. So I'm gonna use these around the top like this and then I can duplicate this and flip it horizontally so that it's actually perfectly around my pumpkin and everything is exactly the same size. So I'll kind of nestle these in there a little bit tighter and then I'll select the three of them over in the layers panel and actually make them a little bit larger so they take up more of the sign. So they'll look something like that. Next, we need to bring our welcome over. We're gonna right click and send this to the front as well. And then we can start lining it up on our sign and it's gonna be a little bit tricky because my sign is so large. But we'll just keep using these arrows in the lower right hand corner to make my letters a little bit bigger. There we go, because I really wanted to take up a lot of my sign. I don't want a ton of dead space on mine. So it'll look something like this. And we'll make sure that we have plenty of space around the pumpkin and the laurels. So we'll drag this part down a little bit. And in fact, I'm gonna use these little um, markers here on the side with the graph and I'm gonna move these down so that they start at exactly an inch below the top of the board. So that way when I get started lining things up, I know exactly where I need to put everything. I'm gonna move this down a little bit just to give the pumpkin a little bit of extra space. And in fact, I'm gonna start the W right at about 10 inches. And that way when I get started, I can measure 10 inches from the top and I know that's where my top letter needs to start. Um, yeah, I think I'll leave this uh, kind of small here at the top so it doesn't take over a ton. So that way my letters are almost as wide as my sign, which is exactly how I want them to be. Now I'm going to warn you, the ne this next part is a little bit complicated. So if you are newer to using your Cricut machine um, and things like registration marks are unfamiliar to you, you may want to consider waiting until you're more comfortable to um, try a project like this. Because I'm not saying that it's impossible or that it's all that hard. It's just a little bit complex to set up in design space. So if you're not comfortable with design space yet, you may want to wait until you are a little bit more comfortable. 
So I'm going to be using a um, combination of registration marks and then I'm also going to apply my letters with the parchment paper method, which you guys may or may not have seen before, but this is going to make sure that first of all, our letters are evenly spaced all the way down through here and so that they are centered onto our board and as long as we can center our W, everything else is going to be good to go. So the first thing I need to do is click this W, which is still attached to all the other letters, and hold down shift and click the template of our wood piece, and we need to use a line and then center horizontally, which it looks like it already was. So that way we know we're starting in the center of the board. Then I'm actually going to click the eyeball and hide this board so that I can start adding registration marks in with each letter. So I'm going to click the huge welcome SVG and choose ungroup. Now we're going to start adding in our registration marks. And actually, before I forget, I'm going to choose the two of these laurels. I'll use control Z to shift them back there. I'm going to use the two of these laurels and attach them and make them a different color than the rest of my vinyl because I just want it to be a little bit something different. I want it to look different than the rest of the letters. So now that that's all squared away, we're going to begin adding in our registration marks. And you can essentially use any shape that you want for registration marks, but what I'm going to do is go to the basic shapes panel and insert a square. And I'm going to unlock it and make it just a really tiny little rectangle. And that way we're not using up quite as much vinyl because it's not necessary for the registration marks to be very big, um, but you'll kind of see why this matters in a couple minutes. So first I'm going to select this and I'm going to duplicate it several times because I'm going to be using it on all the other shapes as well. So first I'm going to put one of these little lines in between the W and the E and the placement of them doesn't actually matter. So you're, you'll see that they're not going to be consistent throughout this process and that's perfectly okay. Um, they just need to line up from letter to letter if that makes sense. So then I'm going to grab another registration mark and put it right on top then this is the really important part that we're gonna to have to do every single time. And that is to click and drag a box around just the two of these. And then under a line, we need to use the center function so that they are exactly on top of one another. Then we're gonna attach each of those registration marks to each of these letters. So I'll choose W and then I'll hold down the shift key on my keyboard and select this registration mark. Then I'll select attach. Then I'm actually going to move that out of the way but I'm not gonna move this registration mark just yet because I need to add another registration mark between E and L. So I'm gonna duplicate these marks a few more times so that I don't run out. And you can always change them. Um, like I said, as long as they're the same from letter to letter, they can um, become a little shorter if you need them to or whatever the case may be. So like for example, there's not as much space between this E and L. So we can make this guy a little smaller and then duplicate it so they're exactly the same size. Then I'm gonna put a registration mark here between E and L, and then bring this little guy over. Then we'll click and drag a box around both of them. Under a line, we'll choose center. And now I'm going to attach both registration marks to my E. So I'm just gonna click here, and that will select one of my registration marks. Then I'll hold down shift and select the E, scroll up and click the other registration mark, and then click attach. So as you can see, the registration marks aren't the same and they're not in the same place. When we line them up with each of our letters, they'll work perfectly and look just like this. And in case you are wondering, we will remove the registration marks after we're done applying all the vinyl on the sign. So it's not going to affect the final way that the sign looks. It's just using a little bit of vinyl to make sure everything is perfectly placed because getting this spacing right is really hard. So then we'll move our registration marks down some more and duplicate them once again. And now we can make some registration marks between this L and the C. So it looks like we'll have to make them a little smaller again, and then duplicate. Add it close to on top of one another, but then we'll let design space do the real aligning. So we'll click and drag a box around both, choose align, and then center. So now I'm gonna select one registration mark, hold down the shift, click L and click this registration mark and then choose attach. And then when you move it out of the way, one registration mark should be left behind. And that's what we'll use for the top of the C. 
So I hope that makes sense. I know it can be a little bit complicated, but trust me, it's a lot easier to use registration marks than it is to try and align these by eyeballing it with your whole sign, at least for me. I'm not very good at that kind of stuff. So I like to use tools like this so that I don't have to do any guessing. We're just gonna repeat that same process through the entire um, letter or the entire word. And this will allow us to continue to use 12 by 12 mats if we want to. If you have 12 by 24 mats and 12 by 24 sheets of vinyl, sometimes that does make this a little bit easier and faster. But in case you don't have those things, then you don't have to worry about that because these will still all fit for the most part on 12 by 12 sheets. So we'll choose this one. Click the O, click this registration mark. And I like to move them out of the way when I'm finished so that I can see if I accidentally selected and attached both registration marks and I left the letter below without an extra registration mark. So that's one reason why I like to move them out of the way as soon as I'm finished attaching them so I can see. Then we can go ahead and get rid of the rest of these registration marks because they're just free. We don't need them anymore. Now you can see that every single um, letter has a registration mark attached to it. But as you can see, when we get to attaching, sometimes the letters end up kind of being different colors and things like that. So in the layers panel, we're gonna go over to color sync and I'll show you how to make everything the same color instead of manually going through and changing every single item's color. So since most of the things are gray, I am going to be cutting it out of black vinyl, but it doesn't necessarily matter. I just want the W and the E and all of these letters to be cut out of the same color. So what I can do is I can click this gray um, set of letters and drag it up to the black set. And magically, all the colors sync to be black. And you'll also notice here that the um, laurels and the top of the pumpkin are a different color. So what I'll also do is click and drag the laurels up to the color of the pumpkin and save myself a little bit of vinyl by cutting all of those on the same mat. So all of that looks good to me and I like everything the way that it is. So next I'm going to save my project. I like to save it to collections so that they're easy to find later. And then we'll go over to make it. And when you're in the make it screen, just double check that everything looks the way that it needs to. Double check that you have enough vinyl for all of these sheets. And of course, if you have 12 by 24 sheets and you're gonna be using those, you can also change your material size and do all of that fancy stuff. But I'm gonna be using permanent adhesive vinyl for this project, so I don't need to mirror anything or change any of that. So next I'll click continue. And once your machine connects, you can choose your cut setting. I'm going to be using Starcraft HD because that's my favorite permanent adhesive vinyl. And that cuts really well for me on the vinyl setting. So I'm not gonna show you guys all of the cutting and weeding of this because I'm assuming if you're making a porch sign, you've probably worked with vinyl before. But if you need some help with some basic skills like using vinyl and things like that, I will put a playlist up here in the corner of the screen for you guys to check out some more resources. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my vinyl and weed it all. And then I'll see you guys over at my craft table to assemble our sign. So once your polycrylic or polyurethane is dry, now it's time to apply our vinyl. And this is why it was so important to put the template we made in Cricut Design Space at zero, zero on the graph, because I know that I need to start my letters 10 inches below the top of the board. So I'm simply going to measure it using a tape. And that way I know exactly where I need to start so that everything stays lined up. So I'm just gonna mark it here with a pencil. In fact, I'm gonna mark it kind of the other way and I'm hoping that my vinyl will cover this part. And then I'm gonna take my tape and if I know that my board is about nine and a half inches long, I want to create kind of a center mark for myself. 
so that I know exactly where the center of the board is. So it would probably be somewhere around here. So here's the center of the board and there we go. Now I know exactly where I need to place my first letter based on these little marks. So I'm gonna stick my tape aside and I'll begin with my W. It already has transfer tape applied over top of it and I've already burnished it. So I'm just going to peel it off the backing, including that registration mark. And once I remove my vinyl from my backing, next I need to use the parchment paper and apply it to the back of my letter so that I can place it super easily without worrying about getting it right on the first try. So I'll just pull a sheet off. And I need to apply it so that I have a little bit of vinyl and transfer tape sticking out at the top so that I can kind of use it as a hinge. So I'm just gonna apply it something like that. And then I'm gonna trim the excess since I don't need any of this that's beyond the transfer tape. And now I have a super easy way to move my letter around and that way I don't have to have any pressure with um, positioning it perfectly on the first try. So I'm gonna make sure that the top of my W covers over those center marks. And then I'm gonna take a look at my letter and I think it looks pretty even on these two sides. And I'll tilt it to make sure that it's even with the center and nice and square. And when I'm happy with it, I will kind of push down the top with my fingers. Then I can remove my parchment paper and use my squeegee to burnish this down nice and easy. And now I can remove my vinyl, or excuse me, remove my transfer tape. And our first letter is apply. So next we're gonna follow the same process with our E. So I'm just going to apply my transfer tape and I'm gonna reuse the same piece multiple times and hopefully it will get me through the entire sign. I may have to cut another piece, but we're gonna hope for the best. Oh, you know what? And that's a little bit short. So I'll cut a little bit extra transfer tape. and we'll just kind of add it on to the bottom. Then we'll burnish well with the squeegee once again. Get rid of some of these air bubbles. Then we'll remove the backing and add our parchment paper. be close enough that we can still move it. So here's where we utilize our first registration mark. So I'm gonna move my board up just a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're gonna line up this mark right here with the mark that we made for the W. So line it up just like so until it looks like all one line. And then we'll smooth down the transfer tape here at the top. 
lift up and remove all of the parchment paper. Then use our squeegee to burnish everything down really well. If you have any issues getting your vinyl to stick to your wood, you can always use a 143 vinyl ball or a tennis ball, and you can roll over all of those areas, and that's really gonna help it work into the pores of the wood. If you sealed your wood with polyacrylic or polyurethane, you probably won't have as many problems, but that is another tip in case you're having issues. And now that we've utilized this registration mark, I can use my pin pen to gently remove that from the sign. And our first couple letters are placed. So now we'll just continue the same process all the way down the sign. Once I remove that backing, next I'll add my parchment paper. Leaving just a little bit of vinyl and transfer tape at the top. And now I can utilize the registration mark underneath the E to line up these lines perfectly. And you can see really well through the parchment paper. So that makes it really, really easy. I think that looks great. So once these two are lined up, I will um, kind of push down the top of the transfer tape to act as my hinge. Then I'll pull everything up and remove the parchment paper. And then use my squeegee to push down my vinyl really, really well onto the wood. remove my transfer tape. Then I'll use my pin pen to remove that registration mark that we are finished with. Just be really careful not to pull up any paint or sealer with your pin pen. And now I'll continue all the way down the side. letters on our board it's time to apply the design at the top so I'm gonna begin applying the design at the top just the same way that we did with the other pieces and also I just want to brag that this is also the only piece of transfer tape I've used for this entire project which is pretty awesome but I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to my copper Starcraft HD 
and burnish it down with my squeegee. Then I'll flip it over and remove the backing. And I'll apply my parchment paper so that I can find the placement that I like the best. But we need to leave a little room here at the top of the transfer tape to act as our hinge. And there we go. So now we can kind of move it around and decide where we like it. I think I like it about there. So it's not right at the top. Yeah, and it looks pretty good. Actually, I'm gonna move it over just a hair so that it's kind of centered with the W. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. So, now I'll push down the top of my transfer tape for my hinge, remove the parchment paper, and use my squeegee to push the vinyl down. Now I can remove it and begin building up my pumpkin. And I'll probably trim my transfer tape down just a little bit so that it doesn't pull up any of my other vinyl. And the parchment paper is gonna be especially important for this piece so that I place it exactly centered in between the laurels. I still need to leave that little edge. This way I can place it. I'm also going to kind of just lay the stem on here and kind of measure how tall it's going to be so I can see where I need to place it. I need to move it up a little bit. It looks pretty centered there. So maybe it's a little bit high. Yep, now it's a little bit too high, so I'm going to move it back down just a hair. And I think we're going to call that good. So now I'll remove my parchment paper and burnish down my pumpkin. And now the top is all finished. So I'll show you the full sign in the next reveal on my porch. Whether it's a vertical porch sign or something else and you decide to share it on Instagram, be sure to use the hashtag DIYAlex because I love seeing what you guys are crafting. And if you've made it this far in the video, then I really want to get to know you on social media. 
So please be sure to find me at DIY Alex Vanover on pretty much all major social media platforms. And I'll also put direct links to my profiles down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more just like it, then be sure to subscribe to the DIY Alex YouTube channel and be sure to ring the bell so that you get notified every single time that I put out a new video every single week. But don't wait for next week's video. Be sure to check out this one next. Or if you want to make your DIY dreams come true, be sure to check out this video. I know that you're going to love it.